Hey guys, welcome to another Critique the Community. Today we're going to be critiquing street photography. This should be very interesting. It's also an exciting day for us. We have our first Critique the Community sponsor. It's frame.io. We'll talk a little bit more about them in the near future, but if you would like to be a part of the next critique, somebody in the YouTube comments had a great idea and it was unedited photos. So that's going to be the next genre. You can go to the link in the description. You can start uploading your pictures. In case you're wondering, what does unedited mean? I'm not going to say that it has to be straight out of camera in case you happen to shoot raw. You can do global adjustments like white Contrast balance. Contrast and white balance and shadow recovery. Yes, but you cannot go in and start painting in specific shadows, dodging and burning. You can't go in and start removing blemishes. So just- No liquefying. No liquefying, okay. definitely no liquefying. You can't replace backgrounds. I want it to be that original shot exactly as it was. And if you do a, some small global changes, that's fine. But I'm excited to see how good these photos can look. Cause I think we get critiqued a lot while we're doing the critique and people are like, you guys only like stuff that's Photoshop. Well, the interesting thing is, is can you take a non retouched image and make that portfolio worthy? We will find out. We will find out, but let's go ahead and get to the photos today. This is the highest rated image, which is supposed to be street photography. Is this street photography? What is going on in this picture? So in so my it's like something opinion, out of the Hunger Games or something <laughs> like is this guy like addressing a crowd. Like, and if this guy was planted there, then I would say this is not street photography. But if you just took this picture of this dude randomly from the street, then I guess it is street photography. What is this object in the front? I don't know. It's like a, it's like a torpedo is stuck in the building. Are you ready to rate this image? Having no understanding of what you're looking at. I always am ready to rate that. <laughs> three, two, one. I gave it four, you gave it three. I mean, I think it's a beautiful image. Definitely love the blue with the orange contrast. You know, I feel like that looks great. Very graphic, very artistic looking. Having the guy in there kind of makes the shot, but at the same time, the guy, you know, I don't really like his pose or expression or anything, but if this is in fact street photography, then this was captured candidly. I, so I think we're going to, I anticipate we're going to see a lot of black and white images. Maybe that's just something that I have a preconception <laughs> of what street photography is, but I feel like, I feel like a lot of what makes great street photography good is that it tells a story. And I don't know that I understand what the story is. I can't even figure out what this object is in the foreground. And maybe that's a super important part of this image. This is beautifully composed. The colors might be the best colors we're probably going to see in this whole critique. Like this is the color balance and the palette is really, really nice. I like this image. I just, I don't know what I'm looking at. I just, I just don't know that I buy this whole thing that it must tell a story. I don't get that. I don't know. When you look at like, uh, right now there's a bunch of best of 2018 images that are on National Geographic or CNN or, you know, Getty. And you see these images and you're like, oh my gosh, like that is the perfect picture that tells the story of whatever's happened in this last year. Yeah, I'm but that makes sense. That's what the genre is. This is street photography. I'm viewing street photography kind of as a photojournalistic style. Like, it should tell a story. It can't just be like a snapshot from the street. I'm sure we're going to see that. Well, let's see. The community gives this one 3.47, so they're right in between us. But that also means that the highest rated image for this whole critique is just 3.47. Wow. You won a free tutorial, so congratulations. David will send you a message. And if you're watching this and you're wondering what you can win, head over to fstoppers.com slash store to check out all of now, our tutorials. We also need to pick a random winner. Oh, good forward. idea, good so idea. So why don't you pick a random number? How about number three? Number three? Yep. And just for fun, since it's Christmas time, I also have a little gift for you that I think our Critique the Community would appreciate. Oh boy. <laughs> so we're starting things off a little different here, but. If you've seen any of our critiques in the past, you may understand. Is this what a book? could it be? The anticipation. <laughs> what? Where in the world did you get this? It's on Amazon. Being human. Wait, but this is new? 
I mean, it looks used. Yeah, I didn't want to buy a new version of this. I got it for like $2. <laughs> oh, okay. You bought it used offline. Y yeah, I only buy used books, but... Okay, and... and <laughs> What, what was the debate that we had? You just said you love the, the guy who was on Sesame Street who took pictures of dogs in the clothing, and so I looked I him didn't up. Say, I didn't say I loved him. Well, you love him now because you have a book that's going to go no, in your library. I think I remember we were critiquing a shot, and I and there was like a picture of a dog yeah. dressed like a human, and yeah. I just said, I think there's a guy who takes pictures of Weimaraners, and those shots are way better than this. Well, and you now were, you have the whole collection of those those there's shots. So many pictures. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see how many freaking pages this is. So it's William Wegman. Wegman. I don't know. So, you are now the proud owner of his best work. Thank so. you so so much. I'm gonna have to get you something for Christmas now. Nah, you're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> I'm still having a hard time because our critiques are always based on should an image go in your portfolio and would get you work. And I've always been a little skeptical on street photography in general because it's a fun exercise. It might be like landscape photography where you love going out and doing it because it's, it's interesting. And if you like people watching, it's a great way to incorporate people watching in photography. But can you really make money with street photography? Or, I don't know. Or... If you do another genre of photography professionally, should you put street photography in your portfolio? I kind of feel like you should only put street photography in your portfolio if that is solely what your website is about. Right. So I'm, I'm taking this on as like you have a street photography website alone. Yeah. And I don't know if you make money with that site, but could these images belong on that? Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Three. We agree. I think I, from a street photography standpoint might like this image better than the previous one it doesn't have as good of colors and the last picture was beautiful what's the story patrick this is just a young, tell me about the story this is a young girl who looks like she's in the south of france who's enjoying a summer afternoon popping bubbles from a street performer that's it but that's a good story i mean i wish <laughs> she had a little more expression but she looks happy i just i like this image i think this is a a great snapshot from the street that tells a story and has enough going on to make it a solid image. Community gives it 2.61. This is number three. You have won the other tutorial. Congratulations, David will be messaging you on F-stoppers. All right, I'm ready. Three, two, one. I went four, man. Four? I really like this. <laughs> this, is, this is so emotional. You yeah. know, there's there's just so much going on. It's artistic. It's graphic. I don't know. I feel I feel like this could be art and it could be photojournalism, all in one. I like it a lot too. I, I don't know why I'm thinking this, but there's these areas in this picture that look like they've been dodged in a weird way. Like I don't know if that's natural, but when I see it, I just feel like something like it's almost like a huge paint. Dodge brush has been put here. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe it's natural. I do like the composition for again for street photography. For street photography, this looks great. Um, I just I'm curious through this critique what I'm going to find that warrants a four or five star. You're obviously already rating things at four. Yeah, I mean you know I uh, just under the genre of of street photography. Now, what do you think's happening in this picture? Yeah, tell me the story. I'm going to ask you that every time. I mean, obviously, it seems like people are taking shelter from the rain, but it's very unexpected, and it's a ton of rain. That's why I'm a little confused is, like, why have these people not taken shelter before this moment? It's like they're standing. It almost seems like they're standing under, like, a, a water installation in a city. Oh, that's what I assume. In that, But when I first look at it, it feels like they've been caught in the rain, but I've never seen rain come down this quickly, and people... It's got to be like a memorial or something. Well, let's see what the community gives it. 2.86. Are you ready, Pat? Yep. Three, two, one. Three stars. We agree. I mean, it's cool. It's interesting. But a lot of what's interesting is someone else's art, which is this mural. 
So you could take this picture over and over again. If you just stood in this location <laughs> right. and you just have somebody walk by, then it's like. Yeah, it's like the art itself is what's making this interesting. What are they themselves doing? I mean, are they just unpacking their bags or something? Yeah, something not that interesting. But I feel like uh, well, for street photography, it's interesting enough. Our first black and white image. There we go. Community gives it 3.29. Next up, another black and white image. Are you ready? Mm, I think so. Three, two, one. I give three, give two. What is not good enough for you, Patrick? I don't know if the story is as strong as I would like. <laughs> Out of here, man. And there's so much depth to field here. I feel like this image is a little too busy. Like, if there was amazing little stories going on that were all in focus. Stop it with the stories. No, I, I feel like people are going to agree with me on this. Nobody's if if you gonna... don't, like, that's the whole point of street photography. No, it's not. If there were a bunch of stories going on and you have a huge depth of field and you could, like, go through and find a bunch of clever little things, it would warrant it. But as I look around, I'm like, there's a propane tank back here. <gasps> there's some bags. There's a bunch of stuff. What do you think they do with the propane tank? Well, she's cooking. Who but put it there? It's like she's done. Do you think it's full of propane or has it just run out? Stop <gasps> being such a hater. Like she's done cooking or hasn't even started cooking. There's, I just feel like there's not that much of interest going on in this picture. All right. I mean, I feel like it's way more interesting than the people the last Looking picture the is bags. like ironic and like any person could be like, oh, the mural, tell it's funny, <laughs> it tells a story. This, I just feel like you're, the only thing interesting is like this other culture, but I want something more in, in that story. Okay. Well, the community is closer to agreeing with you at 2.29 stars. They're going to keep continuing <laughs> to agree with me. Are you laughing at someone's work? Are you <laughs> laughing at the story? What is so funny about this picture? <laughs> this is a story. Now this is a story. Yeah. <laughs> I was not expecting to have such a blatant story. Yeah. After all the trash I've spoken to you. <laughs> Don't, uh, you can't talk about the story now. You, it's not part of your critique. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know how to rate this. Three, two, one. Really? Three stars? I mean, I, I could give it a... It's, it's like a two and a half. I think photographically it's not a good photo. <laughs> But the fact that you're dying laughing and it got that emotion out of you, I feel like, and there, I, I mean, do you think they were making out for a long time and this photographer had all this time to get it? I don't know how this photo came about. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, from a street photography standpoint, I think this is a pretty solid image. What? I just don't have that high of respect for street photography when it comes to like, beautiful, amazing images. Like, I think it tells a story, and it's shot. That they captured it. <laughs> so, I, I feel like this is a horrible photograph. You know, there's nothing... I mean, this is straight-up snapshot in every sense of the word. Right. I mean, it, it lit, it's bad composition, bad lighting, bad edit. It, you know, it's, it's everything, but... <laughs> there is a story here. There's I don't know if the lighting is that bad for what this is. I mean, what did you want? Like light rays coming through? And <laughs> yeah, like... I want the god rays coming yeah. down on them and then like the storm cloud above the lonely girl. I don't it's know. It's just flat lighting. And I don't think flat lighting is bad lighting. I just think it's like. I don't know. I, I you know, I think a crop and then uh, sure. an interesting black and There's white conversion. There's too much space on the bottom, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so. I have to give it two stars for that reason, but I have to admit, I'll probably remember, remember this photo over all others in this critique. So maybe it's, why maybe it's the has, best. Why are her shoes off? I don't know. There's I don't a lot know. of questions that you're left thinking. Are I they agree. waiting on, is this like a field trip? Is this like on the side of a social? <laughs> I don't know, we gotta move on. Social service building? We gotta move on. Community gives it two stars, they agree with me. All right. 
what the heck? All right, are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. I give it three, you give it four. This is my first four. I love this. I think it's super interesting. I like that the guy is looking back in kind of disbelief. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love the framing. Mm -hmm. I, there's a huge story here. Um, all these boxes are like they falling off and it's right before disaster. Is they strapped on just well enough that this person could still push it? I want to know what's going on with the ones in the back. Like, is she dragging them across and the ground? And is it ground? like styrofoam and it's just like destroying the back, the boxes? <laughs> yeah, I don't get what's happening. I like, I love this picture. I think this is a really interesting image that would be publishable if you had a book of, you know, street photography. This is, this might, this is, my four rating puts this above just being in your portfolio. I think this is a strong, strong image. Let's see what the community says. 2.92, you're wrong, I'm right. All right. Now, how in the world do you think they got that? You know, so much of this genre, it feels a lot more impressive if you know that like it was captured live without any interaction with the client or the, you know, the subject. Whereas if you just told somebody to walk past this door wearing this, well, now it's a really crappy image. But if and if you told them moment, to walk past this and this was the image you caught, it's still a pretty poor performance. Right. That. Like you should have the woman handing the kid the cigarette or skipping or so you, you could direct them to do any number of things that would be more interesting than this. But what? because it's probably happening <laughs> real time right. and it's a candid moment. Then it changes all of its value. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, I do not know. I do not know. Um, I, I, would, I would imagine this was shot live. That's just an incredible coincidence. Yeah. Uh, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Three, we agree? I don't particularly like this image. I agree. I think it's a good image for this genre and street photography, and I think the photographer is very talented and the foresight of, I don't even know how you know this is gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Do you either. set up in front of this, this, this location with this gate, and I can't tell if that's painted or if it's light coming through a gate, but you see something graphic and then you just sit there for 20 minutes and wait for something, and then lo and behold, <laughs> You have a woman that's walking by with almost the same exact design. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see what the community says. 2.85. I have a feeling that all of these are going to be rated much lower because, in general, street photography feels more candid, candid, and, and like yeah. a snapshot. And it's yeah, I agree. Number nine. Are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Uh, I gave three. I'm in between a two and I'm a three in on this. Two and a three. I think this image just feels a little too wide for me. Like all the interest is in the girl and the graphic, you know, pattern, the crosswalk, and then this light's really nice. Mm -hmm. I feel like there might be a tweak you could do to make it a little more punchy and contrasty. But I feel like this guy on the left with his shoe, like mm -hmm. there's a lot. Like mm -hmm. if you made this line go right. Maybe even You're cut through the talking person. crop in on the right and the left. Yeah, I just feel like the crop could be stronger. I like the vantage point. Um, I love the color. Like, they got lucky with uh -huh. everyone being in kind of flat coloring, and then there she is with the only person with an umbrella. It almost feels like this could be staged. Like, they got her to walk <laughs> through, but it has potential. And I think the things we're t I'm talking about are just a quick little edit with contrast and then a crop. So I think just doing those two things could make this a solid three for me. I agree. Um, I, I, I didn't really consider the, the cropping on the sides, but I think that would definitely help this image out and it would be super easy and quick to do. This reminds me of the scene in The Matrix. Yeah. Are you looking at me or are you looking at the lady in the red dress, Neo? Community gives it 2.56. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this critique, this critique is actually sponsored by Frame.io. In case you guys don't know what that is, let's say you're a videographer and you're doing some video project in Premiere or similar, and you're trying to show the client what the project looks like, 
but then they're going to write notes and they're going to say, hey, at this timestamp, will you take this out or add blue to this frame, whatever. And it gets super, super complicated because the timeline that you might be looking at in Premiere might be different than the export and blah, 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 blah. So the basic idea of frame.io is that they've created this website that you can include everybody in. So if there's multiple editors, everybody could be a part of this creative directors, the client, everybody can have access to this and they can kind of see the project as it's being edited. They can make suggestions, they can even draw on the frames themselves. And then the best part of this entire thing is it syncs back to Adobe Premiere. So all of these edits are right there for you to see. So if you're the editor, you don't actually have to go to this website all the time and keep checking things. It's built right into Adobe Premiere. And then of course, if your client doesn't even know how to use a computer, they actually have an iPhone app as well. So they can just see everything they need to see about the video and make notes and everything with an iPhone app. Collaborating with a bunch of creatives on video is much more difficult than photos. Yes. Photo is very easy to edit and say, ah, oh, can you tweak this? But if you've ever edited video and had to make changes globally to a, even a two minute little oh, commercial. It, we had a client last year and it was this sort of thing. They, they made notes of like, put this clip here and that clip, th they basically rearranged my entire edit for a video and it was an absolute, it would have just been easier for them to edit it at a certain point. Yeah. And so having something like this where it's, you know, so spelled out, there's nobody can make mistakes, you're not having to do things over and over again. Give it uh, some thought if you're a, a video editor. I know a lot of stuff that we do is internal. We're doing it ourselves here in house. So we just call people over to look at our yeah, I, I say, guess. Patrick, get in here and tell me what the hell you wanted. But if you're dealing with clients externally and they're not right next to you on another computer, definitely check out frame.io. Thank you guys for sponsoring this video. Next up, number 10. Are you ready? I think so. Three, two, one. <laughs> I think I'm going crazy. I'm going five here. You went five. I went five. I, I thought you did a four. I did five. I was in between a four and a five. I mean, so I was I mean five's a, I was crazy. Between a three and a four. I mean, listen. I feel like this guy. This is, this is a character right here. Yeah. And then when I look at this scene, it's an, it's amazing in the color and the lighting on everything. If you if you look back all the way and you see the weird tarps and stuff hanging down, it's it's not the perfect polished image that. I would want if this was a commercial shoot. You know, look at his tennis shoes, for instance. They don't really match the rest of his outfit. Nothing about this screams commercial. This is, it's all rough around the edges, which makes it cool. But you, but it was only a three star for you. You know why? Could you take a guess why? Because the story's not good enough. Exactly, <laughs> and I feel like the light's awesome. This location's great. <laughs> Photographically, you have depth of field and a, you know the lens choice. Everything's great. I just am like, uh, I want I want something else. I don't know what it is. Like I want him to be leaving an area where there's a bunch of tough kids playing back there, or there's a poker game, or there's uh, a couple cats, making out on the ground. Something to where you're like, wow, like that's an interesting story. Instead, I just get this vibe of like, here's a guy dressed kind of strange for the environment, where his like suit and jacket don't really match. And he's walking through really beautiful light, but I'm still left wanting to something more to put it in the four or five category. Okay. I mean, this should probably be four stars. I mean, I, I went a little crazy. I got very excited because I love the lighting on him. This, besides the first image, this and the first image are the, the two strongest photographic images, I think, mm -hmm. from like a technical standpoint. Mm -hmm. But that may not be enough to save it. Let's see what the community says. 2.98. They agree with you. Holy. Now, didn't you say you wanted people on the street doing things? Yeah. Here you go, Patrick. Where is this? This is uh, like Broadway and Times Square. Times Square, right? <clears throat> I mean, you can tell from the light. It's got that yeah. <laughs> like really flat neon light that's like difficult to, to color correct. And I think, don't they have those planters down there that are like security barricades? Maybe. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. I give it two, you give it three. I just I just feel like this kind of feels snapshot-ish to it me. Does, it's not that exciting. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of the genre. A lot of it is snapshotty. I just feel like there's a little more of a story here, and this is an interesting capture of like something that happens a lot. I'm sure this chess player, the homeless guy, is extremely good. You could probably count the chess pieces here and figure it out, but you see this a lot in the city, and I think this is an interesting little commentary on it, and there's this guy that's like in the business suit who thinks he can go up against him, and he's probably losing. Um, maybe there could be a reaction where he gets one of the, the chess pieces off, and one of them's making a reaction or something that would amp up the emotion a little bit well, that more. That would but, tell more of a story, that's for sure. Yeah, but I mean... I think for what it is, the lighting and the color aren't great. Maybe I would see if you could play with the, the coloring. and and. It feels awkwardly tight to me, too. I feel like I want the camera to move back just a little bit, give, give them a little bit more room to breathe. And then I just feel like the lighting and the color is really ugly. So I'd like to see this as a black and white conversion. Um, I'd also maybe like to see... A different camera angle maybe get really low to the ground and yeah. shoot across the the board even though maybe it'd be difficult to tell what they were yeah. doing at that point sometimes with the color i mean i imagine in, in black and white this image might get lost a little bit because there's so much black in their clothing um i think a lot of times in photoshop you can go to the color balance filter and just tweak the shadows and the highlights and mm -hmm. give it kind of that more cinematic color grade <clears throat> And I think you could do a lot. This has a lot of the magenta and red in it. I think if you played around those sliders. Adding blue to the shadows? Maybe. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do. And that environment is so crazy with the lighting anyway. I don't think it's going to look out of place. Community gives it 2.36. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, two stars. We agree. I mean, you know, street performer doing weird stuff with his legs. Not that interesting to me. I may, you know, maybe it's not that interesting to me just because I've seen this guy in New York a thousand times. I mean, it's definitely an interesting and, and unique skill to have in the sense that not everybody can do this. But I just, I think you need the crowd's reaction or you need something it's just it, you're force feeding the audience such a obvious subject matter you think you can do this no i definitely can't do that can you do that I do they I teach you this in jujitsu i think i can do that you can't do that now straighten your legs <laughs> is that how he's doing it <laughs> so i don't think you can do this and I don't think you want to do that attempt in public for money. You might be right. That's probably a good you idea. You might be right. Community gives it a 1.89. They agree with us generally. You ready? I guess. Three, two, one. Two, we agree. I thought you were going to give this a three. I think like... Comparing this image to all the other ones, generally, this has a lot of photographic elements. It's super shallowed up the field. It's pretty nice lighting. But again, I just feel like it's not telling an interesting story. It's just a snapshot of a guy, you know? Maybe that this was in a series of pictures on people who live in New York or some town with their pets. I don't know, something like that. Maybe it has a place in some very specific portfolio. But I just feel like, you know, he's looking straight at the camera. He's giving a weird expression. And there's just not enough going on for me to think this is a great street photography image. I agree. I don't think I have anything else to say. 2.27. Gosh, that guy is giving. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Ready? I'm kind of torn on this one. Three, two, one. You go four. I was thinking four or five on this. I really? mean, I, the one thing that's pulling me out of this shot, I hate the guy in the background with the cell phone. Yeah. But oh my gosh, I could, I mean, I could see this totally being in, you know, National Geographic, Time Magazine type thing that, you know, tells the story of some 
event that was yeah. going on. Um, I, I feel like, you know, you, you make this black and white, it becomes instantly more timeless. Um, the I'm wondering if the crop is a little high above his head. Yeah. Um, I was trying to crop it a little tighter. And there might be a tight crop you could do and get rid of that guy altogether, but then it's it's too... It loses something. Like, this guy on the far left with his mask up, I, it frames the image so well. Yeah, it I like mean, points straight. Like there's, there's this subreddit called Accidental Renaissance where they show pictures like this that look like Renaissance paintings. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I love this. And what's funny is the guy immediately to his right, the subject matter's right, he is like this shit-eating grin that's kind of like smirking, you know? Like yeah, he, he's he has like a, a bit too. But no, I kind of like that, like, it, it makes you feel like the situation's not as serious. <laughs> I mean, the guy to his right has his mask up, and he's like, doesn't seem all that concerned. The guy to the far right almost seems like he could be on his phone. He's looking down at the ground. No one seems that concerned except the subject matter, which I think, Tells an amazing story. It tells a, it, yeah, it does. It tells you something. I don't know what it is, but it makes it more interesting than if everyone was just super pissed off. What did the community give it? What do you think they gave it? I bet it's gonna be three point two or something. Two point eight. No, two point nine. You guys are harsh, man. Hmm. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. I'm in between a three and a four on this one. I mean, this is really, really cool. Yeah. The reflection of the yellow in the bottom left really pulls this whole thing together. Without that reflection down there, I feel like you would totally be, this image would lose so much. So this image is working for you because of the color play more than the color and the the geometrical shapes. Because if you just took that yellow and desaturated it and made it more silverish, like that's just like a color play. The image didn't change in any way. Like that's adding, like even the tonality would be there. Yeah, but I just I like that, that yellow that's on both sides, diagonal from her. I just I. And the way this is framed up, I mean, if you look at where the top of this escalator starts and then where he framed it on the bottom, it's like. It's very geometric. Mm -hmm. It's a very nice composition. What do you think? Where do you think she's going? Where do you think she's been? So many stories to be told. She's carry. It looks almost like she's not carrying anything. Maybe there's luggage there, but you feel like this is an airport of some sort. But then it's kind of not nice enough to be an airport. It's like is she going to a subway? What what's happening in this photo? She's on the stairs. That's it. She's walking. Yep. Community says 2.77. So when I compare this image to the crazy looking guy with the birds, yep. this feels more timeless. It feels like more professional to me. Um, it's less intimate. The bird guy, you're right up in his face shooting wider. In a way, but I, I feel like this is more intimate because he's looking right into the camera. It's like, it feels like this shot is all about him where the other one kind of felt like a snapshot of a crazy guy on the street. Yeah. Let's rate it. This one's... Three, two, one. Difficult. Three. It doesn't feel as candid. It feels more like classic portraiture, but I guess those two things, like street photography and classic portraiture, can kind of overlap. Yeah, I don't know where one ends and one begins. It's a really nice conversion. Yes. Community says 2.78. Community is rough on us. It's rough on the community. Is this an actress? I assume. <laughs> because she has fancy lipstick on so Charisse Theron something I think she's like she's got that. one of those names that like I probably pronounced it wrong I'm but. sure you did 
All right, let's rate it. All right. Three, two, one. I'm going one star on this. I just feel like... I could, I mean, yeah, I don't, I guess I'm having a hard time. I really haven't even thought about this till the critique. What's the difference between a one and a two in this genre? Because <laughs> you could have a snapshot that's a four because of the content in the picture. So, yes, but... I just view this as like, could anybody take this? I mean, it seems like this is a more professional image. There's it's no got, doubt. It's, it's in focus. It's shallow depth of field. Yes. It's in focus. It was taken with a professional camera by a professional photographer. That's or not some... to say that a snapshot can't be shot on medium format. Sure. But I don't know. One, two, this is not. I mean, she's one of the most beautiful women in the world. And there's absolutely nothing going on. And I mean, you've, two you've stacked her. three faces in the background. Yeah, to me, this feels like, you know, oh, there she is. you're a paparazzi or something, and you, you take 5,000 photos, and then, you know, this is one of the 4,999 you delete, and then you get the, the best one where, you know, she's flicking off the camera or something, and that's what you sell so, to yeah. TMZ. All right. 1.23, so. Damn. Are you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Five. <laughs> well, like, I was thinking, all right, I'm going to give it a four. But then I thought, if I gave that guy with the tennis shoes in the alleyway a five, I like this better. Yeah. So I got to I gotta at least give this a five. I and, like you know, this better than that picture. I mean, this is incredible. Yeah, this is really good. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of freaking me out a little bit how eerie and freaky this looks i don't know i don't know what's going on here but i mean there's just so much emotion in his face he's looking right at the camera like he doesn't want his photo to be taken the guy's standing in the background out of the rain i mean yeah they're like perfectly positioned like four different characters that are all out of focus and just hanging out back there and it's like is he with them and the veg vegetable sign and but then it also yeah. looks like this could be like there's a that sign to the right that looks a little more does, modern. Yeah, modern. So you kind of wonder like there's just a lot of stuff going on in this image. There's there. a lot of stories to be told. There are. There are. Did they get their vegetables? Are they eating their vegetables? <laughs> he <laughs> he's not getting his vegetables. I don't know. What does the community give it? Three point seven two. Oh, sorry, three point two two. Okay. Man, I gotta say, I did not have high hopes for street photography. To be honest, I just don't have the highest respect for street photography because I've seen a lot of horrific street photography snapshots that people yeah. act like is art. But I don't think I've ever given five stars to not in, much in two two five stars and one critique. Like I don't think that's ever happened. Yeah, that is pretty shocking. Well, to be fair, this is like a field. So this is like field photography. It's not street. Oh, it's not on a street? No, so I don't know if this fits the mold. But All right, you ready? Three, two, one. Four stars. I'm in between a four and a five on this one, too. Yeah, I feel this like this is, is incredible. This is a beautiful image. And what's going on here? Are they looking at like a fire? And how did the, I mean, is the smoke just naturally that dark? That's wild looking. Oh, yeah, I wasn't even thinking that was smoke, but that totally makes more sense now. I was thinking this is some kind of like, I know this isn't infrared because I know what that would look like with the grass and their skin, but I was thinking they burned in or did something strange with like a storm, but yeah, they're like watching a property burn. Now, out of all the photos we've seen so far, I want to know the story behind this one more than any other. So if you were the photographer, let us know in the comments on F-Stoppers, what is going on here? I mean, this is... Yeah, and like, are these kids related to the fire? Like, did they live in the house? I mean, they don't seem emotional enough for that, but it does it does tell a pretty crazy story that, I like the images where it doesn't hit you right away, but then when it does, <laughs> it's more interesting. Some of them have no story, and then some story so obvious that it kind of loses that, that impact, but I like it when you, you have a lot of questions and it takes you a second to really understand what's going on. Very cool. Community only gave it a 2.9. What is wrong with you, community? Solid. What is wrong with you?
This is the final image. Now this is number 20. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Four. Whoa! Four. Whoa! Two! I just feel what? like this is like an everyday snapshot that you take uh, in your art class. Like It's a really well done everyday snapshot you for your You think so? Class. Like it's got... It, it well, okay, okay. For your for your college photography class, yes, this is probably. Dude, if I took that in my college photography class, I became like a super successful professional photographer. I never took anything near that good when I was in college. I just don't know if we're setting the bar like low or high here. Like it, I will admit, I am setting the bar much lower than normal because of the genre of street photography because I know the bounds of that genre. Um, so that's probably one reason why I'm rating things a little more highly than I normally do. But this, like, if you were a commercial photographer, I no, I probably wouldn't tell you to put this on your website. Like, there's cars and stuff in the background. It's just not, it's a, it's a great portrait with an interesting expression on this guy's face. But if you were hired to take a picture of him, it may not be the best location. I think he looks fantastic. The lighting on him is great, but maybe I'd move him somewhere else. However, if this was street photography and you came upon this guy and you asked him if you could take a portrait of him, now I feel like this is really good. Well, that brings up an interesting thing that we're just getting to now on the last image is if you ask to take a portrait of him, are you now breaking the realms of street photography? So many of these know. images, like yeah. I don't know that anything we've seen so far is anybody, to, even the guy who's sitting there with the violin in the, t in the square, none of this feels like portraiture. This is all candid stuff. And I guess that's why I'm a little skeptical. Skeptical is probably not the right word, but you're shooting so wide and so close that this, this feels like this guy is participating in this a little bit more. Like okay. this isn't shot at... 100 millimeters maybe this no. is shot at 30 yes it's shot and it's you're close to get the depth of field to do that at 30 millimeters so it just kind of feels like maybe this is a, a portrait and in that sense like it's a cool image but i i guess like it feels like it's kind of not as much street photography because it feels like this guy is okay with you being there it's not like you just whipped out your camera and there's some amazing street photographers where we took a class at Golf Photo Plus and, and he's talking about how to pre-focus and walk with the camera by your side and take a picture without people knowing mm -hmm. and you're not looking through the viewfinder and how to shoot at F8 and get everything in focus because you can get these reactions that are totally natural. If that's what this photographer did, then that's amazing. But this feels like maybe this was, uh, there was a relationship here already. Let us know if you're the photographer, let us know in the comments if you knew this guy, if you asked him if you could photograph him, if you snuck up on him and put a camera right in his face and took the picture, I don't know. It, it's it's interesting, an, an interesting debate for sure. Um, but you know, that's the tough thing about street photography. I don't really know where that line is, where it turns from street photography into a portrait. But I, I remember or watching- Or commercial, like you bring people out into the streets and you're, you're you know, like you could still take an image Maybe if you have a crew, then it's definitely not street photography. But you know, you could go out and, and tell a friend to walk past a crowd and get a reaction and you're there taking the picture. Like, that's not street photography, I don't feel like. Yeah, but I've also seen famous street photographers who ask people if he can photograph them and he takes like fashion style photographs on the street of real people. And, yeah. But he still asks for permission. So I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I don't think we're gonna come up with the answers here, but. Uh, thank you guys so much for submitting to this critique. The community gave this final image, if you're curious, a 2.4. Ah, okay. Yeah, thanks for uh, being a part of this critique. I was pleasantly surprised yeah, that was with really how enjoyable. good some of these photos were. Maybe some of the best I've seen in a critique, which is really cool. If you have photos that are unedited, but look so good that they look like they're edited, submit to our next critique, because I think this one's going to be particularly exciting because uh, we like polished images. Yeah. You're not allowed to polish them anymore. So we'll see you next time. Happy Christmas.